So there's the depth of my core. And so now I just cut uh, I just cut it to that depth. And now I'm going to insert this right onto there like that. And now I've I've met the cambium tissue of that and I can adjust accordingly. Um, Maybe I'll just match that one side there. Let's see. Maybe I'll match the whole thing and then, okay. Now, one other thing. Okay, I just have a vegetable skewer here. I'm gonna skewer through here into the stock and that puts pressure down on the cyan to the stock. Okay, hold on. See that now? And now we actually have a really nice little fit there. All right. Now I'm going to tar it up. Hold on. All right. Now see all the exposed areas of the cut have been tarred with water-based roofing tar. The skewer is through the two. I still have the shoot intact and now I'll just put uh, and, and that's why the, the skewer also helps with a, a, place to, a plastic bag to not have it tight around the cyan. You could you could uh, improve that. I could tie it with a, 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 a plastic bag. Now, now I'll just set this in the greenhouse. So uh, so so, so much to tell you, and I always get tongue-tied. <laughs> um, so, we're going in the greenhouse now. I did a few of these graphs a couple of weeks ago, and they're performing really well. Um, so, what, what you want to do when you graft is you want to have the stock when it starts to resume growth, you know, you cut the stalk off deep like that, and then you want it to um, regrow, it's going to have a, it's going to have what we call a wound response. And so that wound response is a flush of growth. And you want that flush of growth to come into your cyan. See? So now here, here's one right here. You can see the cyan pushing a bud here. Now, I also got the stock to to throw out that the, the their buds. Let's see if you can see. There's one here. There's one down here. Now, this one hasn't re pushed yet. So, I I leave these. I I might take off a really vigorous one or two. But I actually leave them until I see the stock, the cyan, sorry, uh, pushing, like I have here. And then I remove that growth. So now all of the growth now from this cutback stock is going to transfer into that shoot right there. And we're going to tie it to the stake. And we're going to put a bamboo stake in there and tie it up. And then you're going to end up with um you know th these are not grafted these are just cuttings but you're going to end up with something like this where the stock which is also the sign but the the is is tied and trained upward to a central leader so that's what's going to happen with the graft now bear with me here for a minute i'm just going to walk through the greenhouse i'm going to walk around and give you a little bit of a lecture. It's not a lecture, but it's a talk. It's a grafting talk. I have a lot of grafting experience. I used to graft avocado and citrus. I probably have maybe as many as 10,000 under my belt, both in the field and um, in the greenhouse. So I have a lot of grafting experience. I used to graft plums and peaches and 
apricots and you know those are the the, the, the prunus but what else uh, apples well, still prunus uh, persimmon and not too many nuts but figs figs is another good one so um, and each one of them has uh, a unique requirement so in the case of figs for example believe it or not you need to bleed the sap so you cut below the after you've grafted it you cut make cuts lateral cuts or spiral cuts rather in, through the bark and bleed the sap otherwise it interferes with the graft union but coming back to dragon fruit now this little technique that I've just shown you is a is a nice little technique it, it gives you a really strong union there um, a lot of cambium contact because you, the, the cambium that active cell layer that's dividing and making all you know it's differentiating into all the other tissue that cell letter cell layer is around the core maybe a little bit in the core it's usually just a single cell layer but you it's going to connect with the core that you removed because there's remaining cambium tissue in there so you have the two cambium tissues connect and then you have um the resulting growth but you also have a strong area little area where the two cambiums connected they'll they'll merge they'll fuse it's called um, um, the callus tissue they'll form callus tissue in the, in that wounding section there and um, uh, but it'll be strong that's the, it's so critical. You see so many of these grafting techniques. They use the old style, what we call a cleft graft or wedge graft or splice graft. These different various forms of grafting. And they're not very strong. And there's two problems with that if you don't have a strong graft union. The first problem is that all the regrowth is going to want to occur below the graft union. So you're going to be constantly trying to fight with the stock, wanting to grow below the graft. That's not good. <laughs> then finally you can force that graft to heal, and, but by this time it's sort of like weak growth through the graft. Well, in dragon fruit it's not too bad, but it does occur. But then the, the, that's the first problem. But this, then the second problem is that you can get a lot of um, weakness from that that union so if, if you have like strong lateral branches that are fruiting or they're heavy it's going to be weak at that point and one little twist or turn somewhere and you're going to end up with it snapping breaking uh, you know splintering off a little bit and so on and so forth so you got all those associated problems you want to get away from those have that graft union low then that graft union down at that uh, base especially if you merge with the first flush of the wound response from the stock you're going to get a really uh, good union and then it's so low it's tied to the stake and there's really not a lot of you know a lot of um, pressure down there the pressure is up above there the pressure starts about three feet not down at uh, at one foot or something so um, now why graft well you, you know the reason I'm grafting is because I want to um, I want to take one little piece of that cutting which I could make as a separate plant and I have done that but I want to make it rapidly into uh, more tissue so that I can propagate more tissue quickly that's all I'm trying to uh, uh, expedite the process of making more plant tissue available to myself so the, but another reason that people use grafting is for um, um, uh, don't look too closely at the ranch. We're, it's always messy. We're so far behind on everything. Um, 
another reason is for um, a little bit of what we call precocity. In other words, uh, you're going to get fruiting at a younger stage of age in the plant. So you take a, so that stalk there that we cut back was maybe what? Maybe it was a year old. So this, but the the this, the the cyan was only maybe four or five months old. So we're going to get the the stalk is going to induce a level of maturity into the cyan. So that's why if you have a a tree in the orchard and you graft it, it the, the tree might be 10 years old. And then you graft it using a one-year-old piece of tissue and then the one-year-old piece of tissue normally would have to go two or three years before it's prepared to flower and fruit for you. But now you've induced this maturity factor from the stock and you're going to get it to flower like one year earlier or two years in some trees two years earlier okay so that's why we're using grafting is to uh, in, uh, induce a sense of what we call precocity or uh, fruiting at an earlier age and uh, and then the, in, in, in my case to uh, to get a little bit of a jump start on on 